Tuesday, I'm going to perform a magic trick. I will attempt to power this AGX Orin developer kit with this little battery. I will plug this battery into this boost converter. This will convert the battery 7.4 volts to 12 volts. Then I plug the boost converter into the Jetson. Thank you, thank you. And now for my next trick, I will attempt to run a program. I wrote a little app to keep track of the number of watts that the Jetson is using. You can see the dial on the left-hand side of the screen. Brought up a web browser. Let's run this YouTube video. I'm using a wireless connection. You can see that we are getting good performance and we're using about 15 watts. This is a demo from the original Orin setup video. Let's start up a demo that uses more power. And now the trick is revealed. You can see that we are getting frame rates about half of what we were in the original demo. That's because we put the Jetson in 30 watt mode. If we take a look at the inferencing performance on the six streams, we can see they're running about 12 to 13 frames per second. And for some reason, the display is not updating as quickly as it should. Let's try running our video again. That appears to be running at the correct speed. Let's reset the power model to maximum and see if we can up the frame rates a little bit. This requires rebooting the machine. After rebooting, I will set the demos back up. Okay, finished setting up the demo. Let's hit run. Uh-oh, it turned itself off. Let's take another look on instant replay. Freeze it right there. Right after we show the first inferencing results on the display, it crashes. That's because the battery shut down due to an overcurrent draw. The battery management system will only allow you to draw so much current from the battery. For a battery this size, you can draw maybe 20 watts, give or take. But that's a maximum. You don't really want to run this type of battery flat out. How do you solve this problem? Use a bigger battery. This is a four cell version of this two cell battery. Let's plug the battery in and start up our demos again. Let's hit run. And you can see it's much happier now. Let's try running a YouTube video. We'll go to jetsonhacks.com. They have the best videos. Uh oh, dead again. Time for the big guns. This is a power bank which is designed to jump start internal combustion automobiles. You can draw 10 amps at 12 volts from this battery. That's 120 watts. Try to suck that battery dry, you little piglet. I've plugged everything together. Let's turn the battery on, let it boot up, and then I'll start up the demos. Here is our PeopleNet demo. You can see that when we bring up the web page, we hit a peak of about 45 watts. Once you hit the cutoff voltage of a battery, it just basically shuts off. It doesn't matter if it's just a little or it's a lot. This is the performance we expect. Everything is right in the world. This magic trick also reveals why the NVIDIA Jetsons are interesting. It also reveals why people use developer kits to help determine power requirements. This Jetson AGX Orin developer kit can operate from 10 watts up to 60 watts of power. The important metric here is performance per watt. The density of compute capabilities on chips is at the point where we can now place powerful computers on a single chip. We call this system on a chip or SOC. This is an inflection point in computing. As transistor density on chips grows, both the performance and the power efficiency increases. 
which means you get more computing capabilities for the same amount of energy. The higher feature density also means that you can place more functional blocks on the same chip. For example, the Jetson Orin and Xavier's have tensor cores and deep learning accelerators. These features were unheard of just a few short years ago, yet they are now included on chip. These two features make up more than one third of the compute capability of the Jetson. A lot of people have asked me to compare a Jetson Orin to a RTX 3090 GPU. Let's do some back of the napkin calculations. Let's see, a 3090 can use around 500 watts of power. And that's just for the GPU card alone. You still need to add the requirement of the PC running the GPU card and all its peripherals. There are a lot of high-end PCs running 1000 watt power supplies right now. The 3090 uses the same chip process as the Orin, which is eight nanometers. And the size of the chip die for the RTX 3090 is about 27% larger than the Orin. The Orin probably dedicates around 25% of the die chip to the GPU. On the 3090, the lion's share of chip real estate is GPU cores. Hmm, so let's see. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the 3090 system will be somewhat faster. Let's give an example in the physical world. I know a person like you has a Tesla Model S Plaid, which has a 100 kilowatt hour battery. A kilowatt hour is equivalent to consuming 1000 watts of power for one hour. Now, if you hadn't taken apart the Tesla just to use the battery for your projects, you could have driven the vehicle 400 miles on a single charge. That means that you can drive about four miles on energy of one kilowatt hour. Let's say you're running your favorite game on your RTX 3090 GPU on a PC and are using 750 watts per hour. Translating to the physical world, that means you could have driven your Model S three miles or around 4,800 meters. That's 12 laps of an Olympic running track. Now let's say you run your Jetson using 50 watt mode for one hour. Translating to the physical world, your Model S would have driven 0.2 miles or 320 meters. That's three quarters of one lap around the track. Is a car that goes around a track 12 times in the same amount of time that it takes a second car to go less than one faster? My intuition says yes. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Thank you.